Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy. It is a pleasure uh, to hey, have okay. this man in the neighborhood. Same. Jonah Hill, welcome back to the neighborhood. Nice. What up, Jonah? It's a damn pleasure. <laughs> you know? And you know what, man? It Jonah, is truly a pleasure. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. It should be. Yeah. You know <laughs> it, it, it should be, man. But no, welcome back to the neighborhood, it is. man. And, and it's crazy because... And it should be. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what's crazy about Jonah, man? And, and right. We've seen each other many a years. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy when you say big. I grew up listening to you. I don't want to put. But, I don't want to make you feel old and shit. Like, right. Sorry. Instead. No. No. Don't worry okay, about yeah, it. Yeah, we yeah. got you. All right. <laughs> but you don't want to make me feel old and shit. But you grew up listening. But, but what I'm saying is, I mean it out of respect. Yeah. Right? yeah and people yeah, say yeah. that to me now, right? right I'm yeah. turning 35, and people are like, hey, "I grew up watching your movies." Yeah. And I'm like. What? Yeah. I'm young. What are you talking <laughs> take about? It, take it as a blessing, man. <laughs> take it as a blessing. Well, you know what, what I'm I saying? mean to you is that, like, I, you know, am fortunate enough to have and to grow, you know, have been, I only listened to hip hop my whole life. Like, I don't even really know rock music that well that. until way later in life that I just started expanding my horizons. But I grew up in LA in the golden era of hip hop, in my opinion. So I got to wake up every day and go to school and listen to you. That's dope. Have my sense of humor shape. Mm -hmm. Go ahead Have now. my taste in music. Wow. Oh, keep going. You, you and, know and also, just like, you just always represent. You, sick, thank you, man. man. You, would, you would think with all the, the great va valleys that we've had, but mm -hmm. now the peaks that's really yes. going on and seeing your success... I'm you, happy for y'all, But man. you would have helped me out a little bit more. Ooh, earlier yeah. on? <laughs> Not even early on. I mean, right, I'm watching I'm watching the, the, the movie mid-90s, right? Mm. Yeah. I'm like, man, I could have skateboarded at least one of these scenes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I see, I see my you? homie Del the Funky Homo Sapien, which Del did a yeah. great job. And I was even go, I was even That's like, That's my dude, favorite scene with Del. Man, I'm yeah. a credit watcher. I mean, I watch credits mm. all the way to the end. Mm. So even when I was sitting there, when I saw Del the, the uh, Funky Homo Sapien, I'm looking like, man, is that Del right there? Yeah, I'm hearing the voice. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But y'all didn't zoom in real hard yeah. for like, oh, this is a Dale mm. cameo. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It was just the guy that you was like, man, I feel this character right here, yeah. and I do want to get into the whole thing of mid '90s, man. Where did you watch the movie? Yes, yeah. I did, oh, bro. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. cool. Yeah. You know what? And I could not do this interview. Now we could have talked and faked it, and you know what I'm saying. Right. But I had to see the movie, and oh. I'm so glad mm. that I saw the movie. Thank and you, you can man. tell that it's like a it's like a true passion for you. And how much mm. love you have for it, so yeah, like Biggie said, it's it makes it just so much different. Yeah, what really made cool. you do the movie mid '90s? Well, first of all, I want to introduce my friend to my left. Please Mr. do, Nikhil Smith. Nikhil, welcome to the neighborhood, hey. brother. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead now, another LA native, as he should be, man. And we know you. And I, I'm going to tell. You, I'm going to talk about all my skateboarding and, uh, down the hills and mm -hmm. everything. And when there was one part, <laughs> no, there was one part in the movie where I was like, dude, I used to skate down a hill like that. Wow. But I, Nikhil, I didn't stay with it. I went and drove down, drove to the hill that I used to skate down, and I got out of my car and I looked down and I got nervous. I was like, "Man, what mm -hmm. the fuck was wrong with you?" <laughs> <laughs> Back in those days, you know what I'm saying. How did you do but, that? And, but I do want to ask, why did you do the movie? To first? me, to me, you know, I have the reverse career of most people. Is I started in like the studio system with like real mainstream movies, and one of the things I hated about it, you know, I'm blessed to have a career that I've had. I love it. I love the funny movies I've made especially. Mm -hmm. But like you're basically trying to sneak in like a J. Ru song into a movie that doesn't want it, right? <laughs> or you're trying to make a movie like Nikel's the movie star I've always wanted. Yeah, man. And they don't they don't want that, right? And you know, even coming here, you know, I used to want to come here for every movie. Right, right, like, right. Like they're like Yo, you don't need to go see Big Boy. You know you, you should have to told him F y'all, but you, that's <laughs> hey, you know what? And that's you on me. Anyway. No, bro, but that's on me. Like you know what? That's part of growing up. Mm -hmm. It's like standing up for yourself mm -hmm. and being right. like, "This is the shit that I'm into. This exactly. is what I'm interested in." And this movie is a culmination of whether it's the kind of movie star I wanted, whether it's the kind of style of filmmaking that I wanted, the kind of humor and the soul and the framing things that I love, like skateboarding or hip hop in a way that movies always fuck up and butcher. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was really important to show the respect to these two cultures that are a big part of shaping who I am as a person and what I love, what I care about. And see, make sure and try and make sure it's done right. And Jonah, there, there's, there's, a, <clears throat> there's quite a difference between growing up in, in something and loving it and then saying, you know what, I'm going to present it. And mm -hmm. I want to present it the right way. And mm -hmm. and sitting down watching mid-90s, man, I was like, this is a great 
timepiece. Mm. And when I say timepiece, I'm even wa- I think I watch a little bit more than the average person because not only I'm looking for continuity, I'm looking for did we wear those shoes? Uh-huh. Did they, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, like, and we were psychotic. Of, they, we were psychotic. So, but you you sat with that film for a little bit. Like, the, the, is it like kind of releasing your baby? Yeah. To the world. Yes. And what is, what is, <laughs> what does that feel like? Because I, you I know saw you me probably, out in the hallway. I was pissed off because some like old you know, British ass journalists like didn't get the movie. And I'm like, you know, to me, it, it, it upsets me because it actually doesn't upset me. Mm-hmm. What, what, what I, it makes me angry, right? But, but it makes me proud that I made choices that make it. So not every old ass person in the world is going to get the movie, mm-hmm. but for us it's for our culture and it's dope. And I really stand behind it. Man. And I think a lot of choices that, Everything they fought against me to put in the movie are the things I love about the movie. And you know what I love about it as well, man? Just what you use as as bumpers and background. And you know what I'm saying? And, and even the fade on on Far Side, I'm that type of like how, mm-hmm. yeah. how it would come down and you'll hear the movie dialogue. Then it'll come back up and you'll hear the music. Then the fade down. And I was like, man, this is genius. But I do want to come back and see how you and Nakel, how y'all hooked up as well. Oh, my God. Did I mean, put, this guy Did he is, put you to an audition and everything? I, is what a, he I can't back. say it. I'm, he can't say it. No, no. Okay. Okay. How brilliant is this dude in the movie? So good. Yeah. Hey, so man, good. let me tell you. Dude, this first, is my friend. Before we come I just back, like to hear how dope I do he have is. to say this, man. <laughs> you ever seen someone do a role and it don't look like they're acting? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's, that's the best what I kind got, of that. Nakel, from you. Nakel, I got that from you. That's so yeah. cool. Where I was like, and it was crazy because when I first started peeping it out, <laughs> I was like, I know him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, and, and I didn't want to Google it. I was like, dude, I know. And then as the movie started going on, I was like, 100. Because even at one point, Nakel, I was like, does he really skate? You know, and then when it all came together, I was like, 1 billion you percent. How did this yeah. relationship come together? We met through our mutual friend, Mikey Alfred, who's a co-producer on the movie. He owns a skate company called Illegal Civ. That mm-hmm. Nikel, are you, you're on Illegal Civ, right? No, I skate no. for fucking Austin. Awesome. Yeah, I skate for Go fucking Austin. Awesome. <laughs> right, right, right. But Illegal Civ, you feel me? That's family. They're your friends. Yeah, family. That's family for sure. Now, do you... But once you, he came in, I was like... You had to come in to read? He came in to audition, even though I'd been writing a part like for him just because I knew him because he skates for Supreme also mm-hmm. and just Damn. was aware of him. Nikhil's one of the best professional skaters. He's yes, my sir. favorite professional skateboarder in the world. Look at Nikhil over there, like, man, stop. He's just doing yeah. his yeah. <laughs> well, You know, it's like you can't big up yourself. Yeah. You gotta yeah, have yeah, your yeah. friend. I'm like his hype man. So yeah. I, I, I saw I'll, when y'all were walking down, Nikhil was like, hey, man, when you get in there, can you please tell him I skate? <laughs> 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 can you just please tell him? Here are my notes. And that's why when he was like, fucking awesome, you he, you 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 lost the line. He skate for fucking awesome. You thought that he was, you were supposed to say he was fucking awesome. He is fucking awesome and he skates for fucking awesome. Hello. So when you see, and you you got your, and I won't even say passion project, but this is a, pro- a project that's it is full a of passion. passion. Project, man. Yeah. yeah. So when you have this, and this is your baby, and it, there's a way that you want to present it, what made you get Nikhil and say this is who I think this should be? Look, I'm, I'm the kind of okay, yo. I came up in a time where like, you know, they would write articles about how I didn't look like other movie stars, or I mm-hmm. wasn't like this kind of person or that kind of person. And anything I got, you can, like, talk as much shit as you want. But, like, I had to go into a room and earn every role that I right. got or every... To work twice as hard as sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And when Nikel walked in the room, he earned it a hundred times more than any other actor could have ever earned it with his skill, his talent, his presence, and just who he was. And as I got to become friends with him and know him, I'm like, this dude's 10 years younger than me. Mm-hmm. And I look up to him in a lot of ways as far as just... He pushes people and motivates people in a way that's never corny. And so I wanted to reflect that in his character. And you know what I think that's dope about Nikhil also, bro, is that when you see the movie, you got it all in one. Mm -hmm. You know how there's sometimes you'll see a movie and it's like, okay, well, this person is a good actor, but they're not the dancer. Mm. Or they did this and they're not that. When you watch Nikhil, when I watch your performance in mid-90s, man... You got it all. You got somebody that was extremely believable. Mm. Somebody that didn't look like they were acting. You know, the the character like and the characters, the casting that y'all did on mid nineties mm-hmm. is effing amazing. You mm. so naturally root for him. Yeah, and, and but even, you know, uh the one character F F fuck shit. Yeah. You know what I'm fuck saying? <laughs> Fourth grade. Like every like we all had nicknames. You all had a homie mm. that was like, you know, like I had a one homeboy that that, you know, he fell into a, a heater situation, so we called him you know Aww. what I'm, I'm sorry. 
great and we'll edit that part out. You know what I'm saying? Cold world. Yeah, it, 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 isn't it though? Can you imagine? And, and he didn't, he, he's not on social media. Can you imagine being young and being on social media? But yeah. this was one of those things, bro. I was like, this is a great character and a great pick. Now, when you watch Nikhil when he was performing in mid 90s, did you know as you were looking like he's nailing that? Like that, like yes. that's a perfect match. I've had the blessing of a 15 year acting career to kind of been in every kind of situation, any kind of scene, different kind of scene partners. You kind of just can tell when it's working or it's not mm-hmm. working. And, and this guy just brought it. All the kids brought it, but yeah. Nikel, but Nikel, performance is one that especially stands out to me as something special. Nikhil, did you train in acting or is it just, or is it natural, natural? Um, no, I, I mean, I didn't like take acting classes or anything. I just, when we were rehearsing and stuff, I was really listening, really trying. And yeah, I, was, I guess, yeah, I was really working. Have you have work. you seen the movie in its entirety yet? Have you seen your performance? Okay. Yeah. Do Or did you, <laughs> and keep it real with me, Nikhil, did you surprise yourself? Yeah. Yeah, hell 100%. yeah. Yeah. And, and I know just with the backbone of, of just hip hop and skateboarding, man, what attracted you to picking up a board and getting out there? Shit, well... Um, my uncle is Kareem Campbell, mm-hmm. like very, very close family friend. Uh, so he's one of the illest of all him, time. Yeah. So kind of seeing him, uh, like being a video game and, mm-hmm. and like have a crib and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. I was like, damn, he's skating. Like he doing something that looks really cool and really different, but he also getting paid to do it. And he's like living a different life because did you have anybody that thought you couldn't repeat the magic or like man nobody there's no sponsorship nobody gets paid for skateboarding or did you already know and see it i mean i seen it but ain't nobody else really think that i could do that shit mm-hmm. everybody you know focus on school don't put all your eggs in one basket all this mm-hmm. other stuff and now i got my eggs in a whole bunch of different baskets Hell yeah. <laughs> you know and those are good ass organic eggs too yeah. you know what i'm saying <laughs> Jenna, someone, those are good ass brown skin <laughs> eggs <laughs> Jenna, was there someone in your life that you wrote ray after that's a good question i think um well let me ask is there yeah. anybody in your life <laughs> <laughs> that you wrote the character wow. ray after what a great question thank you i appreciate uh, that <laughs> thank you <laughs> it's big boys neighborhood yeah, no, okay, no, no, right. um no uh to me what it was was look like especially in the 90s like what i love about nickel and some of his friends too is like they are inspiring dudes they do like kind of you know they work their ass off in multiple different areas that's something i really relate to and love about life right like kind of just not letting people tell you you know, what you can and can't do mm-hmm. and that you can work your way through what you want to do. And what I love about him and his friends is that they are super positive about you can do the shit that you want to do. And to me, in the 90s, the least cool thing there was was like trying. Right, right. right. That was kind of like, I tried to reflect that in the movie. It was like the corniest thing would be like to be trying hard, basically, <laughs> right? And when someone came at you with something positive and it was not corny, Mm-hmm. and there's someone older just taking a moment to kind of come at you with some positivity in a way that didn't make you feel like they were lame or trying to like talk down to you or being just like corny mm-hmm. that shit sticks with you the rest of your life and so i've had probably a few people or a few moments in my life that culminated in this kind of character that Nikel played but he also naturally embodies that kind of spirit where he just tells the truth like he cannot be fake and then mm-hmm. also at the same time he does kind of lead by example in a way that doesn't make you feel like it's like you're being talked mm-hmm. to in some corny way. Right. And is that is that also in like, because I noticed that in the movie, you know how there's there's someone that you would think like, oh, they'll go with this. They'll go with this. And there's one scene where something is offered up and he's like, yeah, let me have that. And then he knocks it away. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like where, where you get the top dog that's like, like studying isn't corny going to school getting great great grades isn't corny and it's crazy that with, with you writing and and this is your de- directorial de- debut mm-hmm. also yes. with wearing so many hats it's crazy how you really trapped a moment and had that voice mm-hmm. do you sit with someone to remember that much and just capture the voice of of what the 90s sound like or even what what these teenagers would sound like mm. because you've been all over the place. You know what I'm saying? And and you've had so many great accolades. How do you get yourself back down to where it's like, no, this is what they're saying. 
This is what they're looking. You already lived it, but not making the movie corny. Mm. I think that's just writing. You know, that's 20 drafts over three years. Mm -hmm. I think like anything you want to do, what's crazy is it's really just work. It's like, right. can you make any first draft, any first 10 drafts is going to suck, right? So it's like, I would say it's trash around hopefully some little like ultrasound heartbeat. Right, right, where right. Where you're like something good is in here, right? But whether it's everyone else, like as much as like, you know, uh, Hollywood doesn't want me to make this movie. Mm -hmm. Skateboarding doesn't want me to make this movie, right? Mm -hmm. You know, because it's like it's always done poorly on right, both sides. Right. And so um, to me, it's just like, can you work through it? Can you keep Did you going get a little it? any flat from? better and better and better and... And as far as like how people speak, as I think if I have any gift as a writer, that's what like my big thing is like all the uh and like how mm. everyone teaches, like that's all written in the script. That's like what I think the new generation of movies will hopefully have to offer mm -hmm. is really deliberate, you know, understanding of how people speak, maybe from a culture that they don't come from mm -hmm. or that they haven't seen reflected on screen. So it sounds new or it sounds like just people hanging out. But, like, these kids work so hard to reflect naturalism in hanging out in those scenes. Could you tell them as well? Could they tell you as well that this is how we would say it? Or Yes. Yeah, and, and you paid attention to that. I mean, not because I was just like, if you don't ever want to say anything, just say I would never say that, and here's how I would say it. Did you it. tell them I would never say that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was a couple times. They <laughs> are like, what is this? this, this yeah, there was a few times where I was like, uh, it's not... It's not the one for me. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, we wouldn't say it like this. Like, But Jonah is great at writing, so... It was, and I kind of made it a point to, you know, it's not about me. It's mm -hmm. about Ray. So how will Ray say it? Or, you know... Um, but Jonah is amazing. He's an amazing writer. So how how many days did it take for y'all to shoot this one? 35. 35 days. Because our lead was 11, so you can only mm -hmm. shoot, like... Eight yeah. hours, like from the second Sonny gets there till the second he leaves. Like, so he really was eleven. He was eleven when we shot. Yeah, you know. And I was hoping. I was like, man, well, maybe this is a, like a little man that I'm watching right. now. <laughs> because there's there's one scene that I was like, man, maybe I shouldn't be watching this. Shit. I had to turn away a little yeah, bit. Was, <laughs> but you know what's crazy about that is watching that scene. I was there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you know what scene I'm talking about? Like, uh -huh. as a youngster, yeah, I was there. You know what I'm saying? Like we sit here and we have the the conversations about how old were you? Yeah. And then when I say how old, we're like, no, so yeah. young. So when I watch little, you know, what, what, little, what is it? Is it sunburn? Yeah. When yeah. I when I watch it was sunburn. That's the thing, right? Uh -huh. When I watch little sunburn, you know, with old girl, I was like, that's me. Yeah. Is it you know I was like, Jonah owes me a check. <laughs> Big boy Big neighborhood. Boy. All right, now mid nineties, man. Make sure y'all yeah. go check yes. that out, man. Has that Let's been the same that. bell always? My hey. whole career, yes. bro. Yes. My whole I career. I always wanted to ask that. And, right. I, and I'm gonna tell you, man. <laughs> even when I made the move, I had to make sure that the bell made the move too. Yeah. Like, like, man, we. Oh, I, I got to take the bell. I with love me, stuff man. like that. You can look at it and just be like, wow, how many years and days of radio? Do you want to touch yeah. it? Yeah. I would actually. Go ahead now. Ring it. Yeah. You know what? You can see a little bit of more in there. Amen. Go ahead, Nakiel. Nakiel, go ahead and ring it, man. Hey man, you know what's crazy, and, and I know that you 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 you're out there doing mid nineties and everything, man. But if there's a point where you do want to make a movie about that bail, you should you should start like some rough drafts Bio now. Pick, yeah, yeah, for sure. You, you know what I'm saying? That like, bell's been through a lot, it, and it has, man. If that bell so could talk, if that bell, oh if that, God, God, that's, that's a good name. Hey. If that bell could talk, yeah, what a movie. That, I like that, movie title. that would like be it. dope. But you know what? Let's put that on the back burner. Not all the way back, though. It's on simmer. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about mid-90s. You right. know what I'm saying? First things first. Yeah, yeah. yeah Sophomore I, slump coming <laughs> soon. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just, now, I, I got to ask you, man. Like, just in Hollywood, when you say you walk into a room and you didn't, you know, you didn't look the part or they started saying, give me the Jonah Hill type. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Was it hard for you getting into Hollywood? Because we would think that, oh, that's our guy. That's our favorite. Mm. Was it hard for you getting into Hollywood? Um, it, it's not about get, I've been very lucky, man. Mm -hmm. Like I've had a beautiful career and, yeah, yeah. and, um, what it's not about like getting in as much as it, what they want you to be or tell you that you are. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to grow up as a person, to have the confidence as a person. And a lot of it was making mid nineties and making my own film to be like the same way, like, you know, uh, 
hip hop deserves to be framed in a in an important elegant way. Skateboarding deserves to be framed in an important elegant way. The kinds of people I love as artists deserve to be in films the way that I see them mm -hmm. deserve that as opposed to like hey, there's a version of this 10 years ago where they tried to make me make like some really broad silly version of this movie with wow. the kids from like Stranger Things as wow. opposed to like Nikkel, you know? And and to me, that sucks, you know? Like not that this and that, it's right, just right, meaning right. like that's not who I am as a person. And so for me, it's like I kind of grew up, made myself love who I was as a person and be like the things I care about are worthy. Mm -hmm. Who I am is worthy and the films I want to make is worthy. Do you find that out at a young age or no? Do you find it took yeah. me a while, man? And I'm still, yo, I'm still yeah. going through yeah, it. That's, that's what I was saying. That's I'm called being a person, you know? Yeah, like yeah, exactly. Work in progress, under under construction, Hell yeah, every dude. time. And so to even be here talking to, to you guys with Nikhil here about our film that we made together, like that even gives me more inspiration to keep going because this was just something I wrote in my room. Mm -hmm. You know, this wasn't something like. Not like Transformers or some shit that everyone's trying right, to make. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. this is when I was sad or angry or or lonely or whatever. Like I would sit and I would work on this, and this is my heart. And now that you're putting it out there, it's amazing to show it like to you and have you say mm -hmm. what you said about the film, or like you know having uh you know Q-Tip or Frank mm -hmm. Ocean or or you know people in skateboarding or Virgil or people that that are actually of our generation making stuff going, I see what this is and thank you for making it. It, it, it means something a lot deeper to me than trying to impress people who I wasn't even impressing yeah. in the first place anyway. Right. Right? Well, at what point would you say that this, you realized that this movie was changing you in such a better way? Just like even the stuff you mentioned off, off air about like, you know, there's stuff with self abuse in the film. There's yeah. stuff with, with there's, there's harsher stuff that, people were like, hey, you know, you sure you want to put that in there? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. You right, know, yeah, and yeah, you yeah, saying yeah. that is like, like you saying, yeah, yeah, no, I know what you want me to make. Mm -hmm. Right. Here's what I'm going to make. And this is, this is very this is realistic too. Uh -huh. And whether just the homies see it and go like, I connected to that movie or your friends or your family or my sister or whoever, mm -hmm. or, you know, Q-Tip or people I love and respect see the movie. That means more to me than than what like some people who like like you know superhero mm -hmm. movies are gonna are gonna think of it. You know, I do want to ask you this, man. Now, I, I had a chance to read this A twenty four issue number eight, right? Yeah, that, that you pretty the much the inner wrote. children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and the, that's the, a magazine I wrote. Yeah, wow. and just just read. And you know what I love about this is that you had to read this. Yeah, and the way that you had to read it was real conversation mm -hmm. like yeah no thank you for being here. like I, you took me through the whole interviews mm -hmm. that you had mm -hmm. but there's one that says i became famous in my late teens and then spent most of my young adult life listening to people say that i was fat and gross and unattractive and uh, read now, the whole thing because you yeah, can't just stop there and and, and and only the last four years writing and directing my movie mid 90s that i've started to understand how much that hurt and got into my head and I noticed that each person that you sat and talked to, mm -hmm. you took them to either at 14 or a moment in time. Yeah, it's like a snapshot, basically. A snapshot yeah. of mm -hmm. things that kind of we kind of hold on to mm -hmm. pretty much for the rest of our lives. And it's crazy because I was sitting there. I interviewed and, Nikkel for that. Yeah, and I read, mm -hmm. I read yours. Amazing. I read the one Premier's. Your, sis your sister. The sister yeah. one tear made me tear up. Yeah. I really and DJ that. Premier's is actually one of my, and Q-Tips, mm -hmm. those are two of my favorite ones. And, and Premier is another one that I kind of tapped into as well because growing up, I was like 133 pounds when I was like nine. Mm -hmm. And you see kids now, and kids are, are you know, they're, they're bigger now. Mm -hmm. But growing up, and I remember when I saw that at 14, when you tap into it like a snapshot, I was like, damn, do I have one of those moments? And I always was like, man, I'm the happy fat kid. I'm the happy mm -hmm. kid. I was happy in my skin, all this stuff. But I remember there's moments where you'll say, I remember like being homeless. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if you go to my house now, like when you live in a motel, they used to give you these pink soaps mm. and it was never enough soap. Mm. So if you go to my house now, the snapshot soap of being everywhere, in, my God, right. bro. So the snapshot of being in this motel room with eight of us mm. and not having soap and not having a refrigerator and watching it, that got me to even today. I still eat out of plastic forks plastic spoons, paper plates. Mm -hmm. I got so much soap at my house. Like you go there, I literally have 
50 to 100 bars of soap mm-hmm. because I never want to go. But that is that snapshot. Yeah. And, and it can also, be anything. That's what you learn. Yeah. It's not about one thing. Yes. And for and, everybody, it's different. And the food being your friend as well. Like the night that you didn't have it, you know, mm-hmm. what food, the comfort that you had in it. Mm-hmm. You know, the food was always kind of a friend of yours, a confidant. The, you're the only one that understands me. So when I saw that, even when I wrote my book, there was some naivete with writing my book. And then when I saw that, it made me go another layer where you're like, dude, like, what was your snapshot? And I think mm. everyone in here has a snapshot. Everyone of, in the world does. I yes. Think. Mm-hmm. And it was cool talking to like DJ Premier, you know, who's one of my heroes, right? Like, and you I, think they got it all. Yeah. You just, I grew up worshiping Gangstar, like, you know, every <laughs> mm-hmm. primo beat like, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, he doesn't. And he felt so similarly to how I did as a kid that it made me feel good in connecting something raw and real that is painful, yeah. right? And that's kind of like, the, the the magazine is definitely a companion piece to mid-90s is where it's like, there as much as it's funny, as much as it's fun, as much as there's such laughs and humor, there's real pain. And I think the only painful thing is not admitting that that shit exists, mm, right? Right. And so once you do, it kind of frees you up. And now I don't feel any sort of, as an artist, as a man, as anything, to not be able to stand here and talk to any of you as exactly who I am, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And that shit is freeing, it's powerful. I don't care what culture you come from, I don't care what country you come from, like, it, 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 it is helpful and freeing to do so. And then also you get to just be exactly who you are. Mm -hmm. And, and it's all a work in progress, but like, Fuck ever trying to be what other people want you to be. Yeah, man. You know, and we spent a lot That's of time canceled. on doing That's that. That's canceled. Yeah, and we, and we've done a lot of we've done a lot on doing that. Yeah. We spent a lot of time on that. I do have to ask Everybody you: Everybody has has had weight Definitely. always been an issue for you? Um, yeah, probably since I was like a teenager, mm-hmm. like young, you know, young teenager maybe. But it's always something like I'm just trying like everybody else, right? Just right. Try and be healthy. Try and do your best. Try and get. Home at the end of the day. <laughs> do, you, do you have people that say, I like, like the, uh, man, I like the big Jonah. I like the, you know, do, mm. do you have the I likes? I think what all of the shit we were just talking about, whether mm. it's the film, this magazine, this life, is like people can say, want whatever they right, want. Right, they right. don't know me. Like this film is who I am. Mm-hmm. This is your getting to know what I'm about, right? And people can have whatever opinion they want. They could want whatever they want. And that's fair. But it doesn't mean that we're all going to give everyone what they want. And like, are you a social media guy? I'm trying to get better at it, but I'm terrible. Right? At it, you know, like does anything I, hurt you? You're on great social- at it. I follow you. You know what? I'm going to tell you. If you follow Big Boy, I'm okay. If you follow Big Boy's neighborhood, that's Monica. Okay. She's the <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She she the one that makes me look good. Now, now Big Boy, you'll see something on there. You'll be like, man, he hasn't updated this shit since like April 17th. <laughs> You know, but no, no, she she's definitely fire. But do, yeah, do you read comments or do, do I try not to? Again, I'm human. Mm. Like I try. I'm better when I don't. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the worst kind. Of, I think Chris Rock posted yesterday. He's like social media. He posted some picture of him as Pookie from New Jack City, I think. And he's like, he's like, social media is worse than crack because crack you at least like know is bad for you. You think you need social <laughs> yeah, media, and yeah. it's just as wow. bad as crack is, right? Chris always has the like, and you know, the wisdom. But it's like, yeah. but but. To me, it's like this. Like, I'm mad at a review. Mm-hmm. I'm mad at a comment. Mm-hmm. I can't control that shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I made exactly what I wanted to make. If I show up at a conversation with you, I can only show up being me. Yeah. And I and always you know tell what? People. Like, that, you know. And whoever the You want to be was, like, fuck them, but it still yeah. hurts. You just want yeah. people to be nice, but Success. ultimately just be yourself. Yeah, and it I sounds always so tell people, corny and shit, but, no, but it's, it's like true. you can hard to only do. perform to your audience. You know what I'm saying? If this guy didn't get it, he didn't get it. You know what I'm saying? If if you go to uh, a tribe concert, you perf- they're performing to their audience. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They're not trying to go no, to the Philharmonic. No, I'll and- go one more. They're performing to themselves, mm-hmm. and I think that's more important. It's like not even tribe going up there to perform their audience. I know Q-Tip. He's trying to push himself, right? And trying to be himself and make art at a level that he's keeping pushing himself to go better and do better. And like that to me is sick. You know, this film 20 years from now, I want to be able to put it on and go, 
Yep. Stand by every yeah. single decision I made. Glad that J. Rue song's in there and not yeah. some like bullshit ass song that I don't <laughs> like. You know, like, like how hard was it to make mid nineties without yeah. selling out? Just saying, man, I want to see this so bad. Okay. I'll do it's it. just like you have to be willing to walk away. You have to be willing to not make something in order to like even shelve that three years of work and not make it if it's going to be corrupted. Mm -hmm. Right. And that is where I found in the people that, you know, I've learned from so many of my hero filmmakers, the people I want to be in life creatively or I'm learning from and, and trying to emulate. And they walk away instead of making, if you make a, a 98% of the movie you want to make, right. you're fucked, you yeah. know, because it's it's going to be corrupted in some way. Yeah, and that 2% will kill you for the rest of your life, too, And bro. it's better not to make a movie for 10 years. It took me four years. It would should have taken me, like, you know, maybe two years, mm -hmm. double but the time. But you did it the right way, though, too, though. And, and, and there's, it's so, such an old cliche, I did it my way. But you got to do it your way. And that way, man, it you stand when you get older, because all, older, all the cliches that sound like, yeah, super cliche, cliche yeah. are like mm -hmm. so correct yeah, yeah. You know? you're like it was like, there that whole yourself, time. Yeah. I did it my way hey, like. Nikhil, <laughs> Nikhil turn your headphones up and listen to this knowledge we drop hey. in no 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 yeah, reverse yeah. reverse but listen he, to he has more like when I'm like shook about something I 100% call and him see, I noticed that in the advice. interview as well you're yeah. like man I'm 10 years older but I feel I look up to him yeah yeah. it's awesome he's just one of those people he just has it like that anyone who knows Nikhil, him is it hard to hear these compliments about yourself <laughs> <laughs> how come how come you chose not to do any kind of role in the film yeah again because i think like it wasn't about me okay it was like my heart like like acting is to be seen and writing is to be heard in my opinion and mm. sometimes you can do both i think but to me it was about these characters like you know these kids in the movie mm -hmm. i wanted it to be about them and not anything you have about me or any preconceived thing you have about me i didn't want you bringing into this film right. i just wanted you to watch this story watch these people and i don't judge them they do some great things they do some <laughs> horrible things they do some fun <laughs> things they do some sad things but ultimately i'm just telling the truth of how it was and you know that's up for the audience yeah. to take away and i don't want me or what you know or think about me to go into your experience of this film. And, yeah. and why did you Can want Can you imagine it? if he did skating like, hey, yeah. bro. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> He's like at the hey, shop. Like, hey, my N-words. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, Jonah. Yeah. Jonah. Yo, get the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. get off the movie. How much did the city to inspire you in growing up here? How, did, how much what? How much did the city like mm -hmm. LA and where you grew up inspired? Like, why was it important for you to show like this part of LA? Because LA, yo, it's like every movie shows LA is like Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And that's not the parts I loved about growing up here, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I think this city has so much to offer that has nothing to do with Hollywood. Where I, I've been mm -hmm. living in New York because it was too hard for me to live here and not be influenced. Mm -hmm. Like, if you live here, you don't want to be like, yep, I'm making some independent movie <laughs> with like, <laughs> you know, like, uh, yeah. everyone else is like, yeah, I'm making like so Avengers. You yeah, yeah, you know? And, <laughs> So Passion I'm like, project. I'm going to be in New York so I can like not be influenced by that kind of mm. stuff and make what my heart wants to make. And, uh, but you know what, LA, I love LA, man. Like I love, I love that I grew up here. I love the parts of it, like listening to your show in the mm. morning. I loved how much Hispanic influence I had yeah. growing yes. up out here. You know, that is so <laughs> unique to Los Angeles. Like, I love how you say you were in East uh, LA before it became like the... The, yeah, the like Echo area. Park. Was, Echo Park. Was yeah, like, it's crazy like, now when you go. You're like, oh my Echo god. Park. Oh my yeah, god. it's, it's like going to Williamsburg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like they got a Whole Foods and Caucasians walking dogs <laughs> out here. Like, so why gentrified. is there a farmers market here? <laughs> like, like hell yeah. Like they shut the street down on Saturday for farmers markets. Uh -huh. Like they got boats on the water. Now. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is great. I just I'm think it's great place, great music. You know, like great culture that has nothing to do with Hollywood, mm -hmm. right? And so. To me, that's important to show. Like one of my favorite filmmakers is Paul Thomas Anderson. I showed him the film and he grew up in the Valley, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of his movies are like kind of these weird odes to the non-LA, LA, right? Like the Valley mm -hmm. kind of parts of LA. And he was just like, you know, he's really complimentary. But one of the things he was stoked on was like how I showed LA, mm -hmm. right? And everyone tries to beautifully backlight it and make it look mm -hmm. like, oh, and I was like, blow it out from the front. It's so bright, it hurts your eyes. Like, you know, it just... When it's hot as fuck outside, oh and, you're like, and his house, yeah. Stevie's okay. house, reminded me so much of the house that I grew up in. Just yeah. like the layout of it, and like the cement outside. There's not yeah, like grass. Man. Like that was like, oh, that's my backyard. And I wanted to connect it to 
like you look one direction and it's this house in suburbia but then you move the camera to the right and there's a freeway right there yeah. and I think that's like a very like unique Los Angeles but bro you could tell that y'all took y'all time on this man yep. you could tell that y'all took your time on it and, it and I'm gonna tell you man not just because you're in the neighborhood like I was sitting watching a movie and I watched it twice and I was like, man, this, and, then it, and it wasn't about Jonah Hill. Mm. And it wasn't about research. It was like, I really enjoyed the movie. Thank you. The writing, directing, everything, bro. Acting. The acting. acting. And that's yeah, what man. I got to get to. <laughs> the acting, like I All told you, acting, man, bro. the kill. It was like you were not mm. acting, bro. Like the, and, and, and fuck shit. You know mm. what I'm saying? Fourth grade. And that's the our way, friend Owen. Man, so, <laughs> Shout out so Owen. Do, do you, did you know the guys before y'all got into the movie like before y'all got on set yeah i knew olin and Ryder and so Justin. olin is that fuck shit mm -hmm. yeah, olin okay is fuck shit Ryder is fourth grade fourth grade um and i knew sunny from like skating around but he way younger than me so it's like oh what up little man like, uh, and almost what we <laughs> saw in in the movie kind of you know what i'm saying like like Ryder, yeah man, and Damn. and that yeah, was deliberate similar. too because like sunny who's 11 and geo who's four you know 13 when we shot they look up to Nikel in real life. Yeah. Because he has the career that they would want, you know, and the respect that they would want. And so, like, that's deliberate. So, like, they naturally have that, like, Animal Kingdom thing where he's the alpha of this group mm -hmm. because that's what they want out of their lives. So, when they look at him, they look at him with respect and admiration in a way that shows up on screen. And you know what I thought? You was, can't fake that. Was like, genius, you know? too. And, and I don't want to talk about too much about the movie because I want people to have the same experience that I had. Mm -hmm. But there's just some things where you're like, Okay, I know where this is turning. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like the way you know uh, the little one got into the crew, yes. and then the animosity and the jealousy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All the way, Nikhil, to how the movie ends. Mm. And there's one line that you delivered at the end that mm. I was like, "They got me." Mm. And when the credits come up, I'm like, "Not that you got to write your ending, but when the credits came up, I was like." Mm. Almost like, okay, what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, that, that line is the movie. We can't give it away. No, but it's not what, at all. It's what the whole, film, the whole film is about and the way Nikel delivers it. And to me, that's like what childhood meant to me. And the fact that you responded that way, like that, like, I know everyone goes, hey, thanks. That means something. Like, that actually means something yeah, to me. For it real. It was very powerful, yeah. bro. I do have to ask, man. You 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 grew up on hip hop. Mm -hmm. What do you feel about, like, hip hop today? Do you still pay attention? Or are you more mid 90s and 2000s? I pay attention because I what I love about what's happening now is that ultimately, like skateboarding, which I'm, I'm no ambassador to, I'm just a mm -hmm. kid who loved it and it came in my life, right? I sucked, but I loved it. Go ahead now. Same with hip hop, like I'm just, that's just the backbone of my growing up. So for me, I wanted to frame a film around that what Tribe was to me was like the Beatles to my parents, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's an important thing, to, or Mob Deep is the Rolling Stones. Like that's important to show to people, right? In, in high level film, right? Mm -hmm. And to me, it's like, I love it. I, I celebrate, there's lots of people that are doing great shit in rap that I like again I'm not an authority on it I'm mm -hmm. just a lifelong hip hop head but like you put like, Who do you like souls of mischief against like SoundCloud shit like I'm, I'm going souls yeah man right, right, of right. course like like, but also I'm old so now I'm 35 so it's like when the kids and they're all listening to like Triple X and like Mad yeah. Ox and yeah. shit I'm like alright like I'm, I'm I, I see it for sure there's stuff I see more than other shit mm -hmm. right but the SoundCloud stuff to me sometimes gets like I like Earl and Tyler a lot right, more right, than right, I right. like like a SoundCloud a lot of SoundCloud shit right. right so like like Earl is one of my favorite young MCs like I think his records are amazing knocks on an Earl song that's yeah, incredible yeah. um you know of course there's amazing what's shit what's your relationship out. with our future right now what, what's happening man get Tyler on the phone I need to ask him something mm -hmm. shit them, they still my brothers we all friends we just all busy living our life busy's like, good though mm -hmm. yeah, it's not great. too busy's bad. Don't get too busy, but well, busy. But right yeah, no, nah, you're not too busy. Yeah, I am. no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> because you're never right. you're, you're never too busy to say hello, or never too busy mm -hmm. to call somebody, or never too busy to check in. Busy is good. Too busy is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Don't ever get too busy. Yeah, you like I'd be saying? in the editing room and Knock would be like on tour on like a skate tour or something, and I'd like Facetime him. And like those moments, you just forget to do mm -hmm. that with your friends. Yeah, you, you know should, what I mean. Like next you just time you forget. Facetime, you just go uh, Knock. Uh, duh, I'm too busy. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's just gonna hang up on me. I'm gonna be driving. I'll be like, Oh, hold up. 
Uh, he, he already really, knows. He'll be, he'll, be, he'll be up too busy as well. Man, have you talked to Kanye? I haven't talked okay, to him. Okay, let in a me minute. know when you find him. Yeah. Is it true that you were you were going to like direct some of his videos? Like yeah, over the, over the years, I've I've like been hired and gone down the road a bunch of. <laughs> we call it the vortex, you know. Yeah, like man. you get in for like a month and then you get spit out with having done nothing basically. Yeah, but, oh, man. But you know, I said the same thing. I'll say they they try and twist your headlines, make them sound mean or stupid mm-hmm. or whatever. Like love is music. Don't get what this shit is. That's yeah, that's yeah. it. So you gotta separate because we almost. I'm have an art to. versus artist person, but to oh. me, it's all individual. Right, uh-huh. all of it. Like that's a, a topic that's for ten hours of conversation or yeah. more. It's just, it's all individual. What your line is, where it affects your digestion of the art, mm-hmm. right? So, um, you know what I mean? Like it's like as simple as that. Like if, if you can still enjoy the music or the film or the comedy or whatever without letting the personal. It's just what is their right. action Separating. that takes you and go? Nope, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, mm-hmm. Kanye, best artist of my generation. Don't know what the fuck this is. <laughs> Simple there it is. That. I thank y'all thank for you. coming into the neighborhood thank and you. hanging out with us, it. man. Thank you. Nah, and, and Nikhil, thank you for coming yeah. into the neighborhood. He all soft spoken like, over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bitch. <I'm> yeah. <laughs> Why, watch he get out of here and be like, motherfucking nailed it. Big boy. Yeah, big boy. Did you see me? I like, yeah, the bell. like, I was all cool. And, I, he was like, I was all cool and calm on him. Yeah. Every time he asked me a question, I was like, what? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see me grab that bell? Yeah, man. I grabbed that bell. Shit, that motherfucker. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> outside I should have done it, man. Fuck this bail. Outside, outside, I asked him, "Are you okay?" And he was like, "To be honest with you, I'm really excited, man." Oh, that's dope, oh, man. Are you sure? That. But you know what's crazy <laughs> is, like, really however, excited. somebody come in and also now being a fan of your work. Ooh, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Bro. And then watching. And being able to connect with you and and whatever you feel about Big Boy's Neighborhood or whatever whatever that is. But being excited, and this isn't bullshit, being excited that you were coming into the neighborhood. Mm, and crazy. then when I saw like, okay, Jonah and I knew exactly and I was like, okay, that's who I want to sit down mm. with as well. So, and that's not, and this isn't like radio and me gassing you and all that kind of shit. This is really my looking at you now and saying, man, I'm a fan of his mm-hmm. work as well. And and you take that, bro, and you write. And I'm I'm gonna tell you, Nikhil, I, I you got me, bro. You got me, and I enjoyed what you did. And I really encourage people to get out there and not just watch mid '90s and and support Jonah, but I really want people to get out there and see the am- amazing job that you guys did. Yeah. Because you guys, whatever's on the page, there's a difference between what's on the page and mm-hmm. how you breathe life mm. into a film. And you guys were the breath of life that put all the air in the lungs and the shit that we get a chance to see. Y'all did a great job on that movie, bro. Great, believable job. Mm -hmm. Trust me on that, man. Nikhil, thank you for coming into the neighborhood and hanging out with us. Real talk, man. Thank you for having me. Jonah, thank you for coming into the neighborhood. Big boy neighborhood.